Uh, my name is Chris Britton. Uh, I am the chair of the Automation Working Group. Our, our objective is, is the Automation Working Group is really uh, to provide advice and guidance, design, design guidance and oversight to the automation uh, infrastructure that supports the CB program. As you're probably aware that over the last three years, uh, we've been involved in a significant automation upgrade, if you will, uh, to try to support that federated model. So I'm gonna give you a quick status of where uh, in, that, in that upgrade today, we're in the middle of it. A lot of good things have already been done. Our, our purpose as the AWG is to provide advice guidance and guidance on the overall infrastructure. And it's an open group. So if you have interest in joining, I have some you know, contact information at the end of the brief that you can, uh, that you can contact me and, and join us. We meet every uh, Tuesday in general uh, around the holidays and we take some time off, uh, especially uh, based on you know, uh, calendars and things of that nature. But uh, to come and join us if you have any input in quite specific questions about the architecture. Um, so uh, a little bit about the target architecture. Um, and as Chris mentioned, some of these some of these uh, pieces already. What we're looking for to, to support the federated uh, approach is we have uh, what we call CV services. Um, you see that in the middle here uh, around the dark, the dark, uh, the dark here. And Chris mentioned the IDR service in the record submission and upload service. Um, the colors here do mean something. Uh, what you see here in the, uh, the, the bolded area we're going to talk more about during the course of the brief, uh, the TAN areas have, have had a deployment. Uh, Chris did mention the IDR and the RCS capability. Um, we do, uh, this year we did implement a bulk data load capability for JSON 5.0, which we introduced in March of this year. And of course, we do indeed have a web, have an updated website that we are uh, uh, that is available for people to use. It's in beta format uh, or beta uh, beta status, and we continue to migrate to a. Uh, okay, so this is a picture. This is a picture here. Uh, key points are we the stuff in bold. We're going to talk about uh, the the gray areas or the uh, the brown areas have been implemented. The light blue areas. Uh, are are actually being worked on as we speak. We'll talk about that a little bit, okay? So we talked, uh, Chris mentioned CV services. It's really just a web application to preserve CV IDs, publish and update CV records, reject CV records, and for CNAs to manage their own user pool. It's been up since, uh, uh, you know, October of 2020 in its entirety, IDR and RSUs. Uh, it's accessed through an API, uh, with clients that we'll talk about in a few moments, if, if you're not familiar with those, to actually access the CV services you do. It is an authenticated service, so you have to get an account. You can see the, um, the credentials there. Um, now that I can do this, maybe I can also put, uh, as I'm talking um, here, I'll put this in a, so you guys can walk along and see some of these references uh, and read them as we go through. So you have to get credentials. To, to get access to, C, to CV services. Um, and so the link that I posted in the chat allows you to allows you to do that, or gives you gu guidance on how to do that, okay? Um, if we uh, see here, let's click again, there we go. Uh, also, CNAs, in order, because it's an API, you have to have a client to access the API. So there, there's a couple of different APIs or applications or clients that uh, have been created by members of the community. Uh, thanks to those members who've done that, you can get to see the credits in their, in their GitHub, GitHub sites. Uh, all of these uh, items are in GitHub. There's also a description on them, uh, description of them in um, the, uh, on our website. I mean, I'll paste that in for you so you can reference it right now as we talk. Uh, and so you can see, and there's training on these clients on how to, use them. Uh, we talked about them and recorded that training uh, a number of months ago, um, as well as if you can, if you want to use those clients, we have that guidance. If you want to create your own uh, AP, uh, own client, okay, you can, you have, we have our API uh, that is documented here that you can follow that. And of course, uh, the developers here at MITRE and a part of the AWG are available for, for your, for your support. Uh, uh, to support you as you as you develop your own client. Okay. Here, next. Oop. Here we go. 
And in, in, in addition to all that, we have some uh, videos that we've created and other guidance for you to get started using using those clients and the API. Uh, so, so that's kind of what we, when we talk about CV services in general, that's what's available, what's available today. Okay. So we also have the CV program website, uh, and you can go to see that website at, at uh, cv.org or www.cv.org. Um, right now, we are in a phased deployment for that website. We're almost done. Uh, that, that we're looking for that website to be uh, to be the uh, out of beta by June of 2024. It's very stable right now, uh, but we are migrating all the data. Uh, over from the old web website, cv.mito.org to uh, cv.org. We're just about done with that. The big thing right now that we've got to develop is the search capability, which resides on the old website, and we're going to be making that search capability using a, a new technology uh, and more a more efficient technology on cv.org. That is in development right now. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. Okay, that was slide eight. Now we're on... Oh. Now we're on slide slide eight right now. Okay. Uh, the big thing that we did over the course of, of this year, we've done a number of number number of other things, but the big thing was the bulk download capability. What this capability uh, allows is for anyone, and it is JSON 5.0. We remember we're migrating we're in the process of migrating from 4.0 to 5.0 CV record format. And this bulk download capability. Uh, allows downstream users to bulk download, as its name implies, and maintain their own copy of the CV list. Um, we this replace will hopefully replace or will replace the old old methods we had about just packaging up and zipping uh, the whole whole uh, repository and download it on a daily basis. Trying to do that in a more efficient way, um, we're doing this based upon uh, using GitHub as our as our primary uh, component to make that available to the community and i've pasted that it, where it resides in the in the chat for you to take a look at now um, it is uh this 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 uh repository is a copy it's it's we keep a main internal copy of the cv services we've got our no, no sql database using CV, uh, using json records um as the repository, but we package that up and we push it off to to GitHub that anybody can download in, in any other number of different ways or view or download. It is a read-only GitHub repository. It's updated about every every fifteen minutes or so. Okay. So um, let's see, make sure uh, downstream users can use one of four methods to to access or look at the the repository. Um, the uh, the the first method is simply just browsing to it through your through your browser. You can browse through it. You can look at it. It is going to be JSON 5.0 records. It's not necessarily pretty to look at, but if you're comfortable looking at JSON records, it's all there. You can also clone uh, using GitHub and Git technology. You can clone the CVV5 list uh, and receive updates using standard Git commands. So that's a that's a new capability that we didn't have before. You can create and and clone that whole repository. And just use if you're familiar with Git or want to get familiar with Git, you can just maintain that, maintain that over time using the familiar the commands you're familiar with. If you're a Git a Git person, um, another uh, capability, another part uh, way to get this is traditional zip download. You can go to cv.org and zip the whole repository and download it as we did under cv.mito.org. Zip the whole thing and just drive it. Now the only the only format we are making available, unlike 4.0, is the JSON 5.0 format, and that's what you're not, you don't get CSV file, you're not getting HTML through this repository. That is, those are looking to be de deprecated uh, next year. We'll talk about that uh, in, a, in a few minutes. Um, an interesting, a new interesting, uh, interesting capability that we've uh, provided here also is this fourth download method, uh, which is really an incremental but to keep you from having to download the whole repository over and over and over again the um i'll look i'll look into that and why we have a, a not found error there hmm so i'll, I'll think I'll, I'll fix that for you as soon as it's over okay thanks for that comment ashish 
um, is this uh, release page, right? Uh, essentially what this does is this goes through every hour and gives you incremental updates and zips those up and you can go through and not download the whole repository again. So, so the whole idea there, and you can go read about it um, here, I'll post this into the chat. Um, and read about how the releases happen, but you can, yeah, you know, it really cuts down on your download time as well as your, um, as well as your, uh, you know, your general uh, maintenance activities there. You can do it incrementally as opposed to one multiple big downloads. So that's a new new capability that we have there. You can all, we read about this uh, also on the, on the readme file on our GitHub uh, release page. So feel free to take a look at that. We do have more training coming on this quarter next year, some videos and some guidance, specific guidance on that. Um, so, so that will be coming in early 2024. Some, uh, if you take a look at the reading page, it explains kind of that release function uh, there that I just described. Okay. So that's what we have available today. Now, what are we working on and what's happening now in, um, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the development phases right now that are gonna be coming out in the near future, we hope, okay? The first, and, and Chris mentioned this, is the automated data, the authorized data publishing capability. Uh, and the programmatic need for that is, that's gonna allow this very interesting new component uh, of, the, of the program uh, that's being framed up by the SPWG right now. And that is the, um, the uh, allows the enhancement of CV records with additional data provided by authorized organizations and individuals. And so, so what that means is that we, we had to create a set of new interfaces that allow other entities besides CNA. It can be, can be authorized uh, data publishers. Uh, there is a process to go through that. Chris mentioned that, you know, he, the, the SPWG is, re is receiving those types of requests. Uh, and they're looking at the prototype technology that we have created. As required is um, the us to create new interfaces for CV services, um, and those interfaces have been created. They're they're in a pilot phase right now and, and viewable, uh, re being reviewed by the SPWG. Chris mentioned products that are currently going on. They're referenced uh, additions as well as the CISA pilots for Kev and SSVC. Um, and so uh, those those pilots exist, and he talked about those, uh, the, and the SBG is working through those right now. Uh, the ADP policy guidance, programmatic policy and guidance, is currently uh, being uh, being formed up by the SPWG. And Chris mentioned earlier that, that those interested in becoming an ADP can contact the SPWG for an ADP application. There is an application that is being drafted and has been drafted for you to fill out. Okay. Um, with respect to, uh, this is slide 13, uh, the CV repository search capability. I mentioned uh, the search capability that we're currently working on right now to incorporate into the, the website and it will complete, be part of its completion to migrate from the old website. And this is gonna allow users for a robust search of the CV list. We can do that today on the, um, on the old on the old website and that capability is going to be available on a new website after this is this this is done we've completed a prototype technology there uh, against the initial operating capability requirements that were agreed upon by the uh, twg so that we're, we've got that prototype we're doing internal testing on that we're looking for um to release that to the testing community to the community awg community uh not production but the awg to start reviewing that by the end of this year. Um, so you get a peek at how that's gonna work and the process for the deployment is the AWG uh, does a, a review of that, a test of that, we get feedback from the community, make any changes that are necessary and then we push it into production, uh, we hope sometime early next year. Uh, Chris mentioned the user registry. That is another major component of, of the targeted architecture. Uh, and its its focus or its purpose is to you know store and manage information required to operate the CV and uh, CV program. It's focused specifically on you know it's going to be for user authentic authentication and authorizations, a commonplace to manage 
the members of the community and what accesses they have across CV services. So the requirements generation is underway. That's been, we've been thinking about that as a program for a number of years. Uh, some white papers have been written. If you have interest in those, come to the AOG. We can share that with you. Uh, but right now we're in the user story generation mode and we hope to begin development in that in early 2024. Uh, coming to the close of our discussion, uh, important upcoming events. Uh, the CV record, and we, we have a talk today about JSON 5.0. That is uh, the, the official uh, re, uh, uh, format of record, if you will, for the CV list. JSON 4.0 is being deprecated, uh, and we do have a deprecated, deprecation schedule for that. Um, it actually is going to be deprecated, uh, targeted for June 30th to, to go away completely. Uh, there's going to be reduced support for JSON 4.0. What that means is uh, that the JSON, you go to the cd.mita.org site and, uh, not today, and you can download and see the updated CD JSON 4.0 list. And it's actually in sync with the 5.0 list. Um, what's going to start happening in January, beginning in January, is that list is only going to be updated uh, weekly at that point for uh, through January. Uh, in February, it's only going to be updated every other week. And starting in March, it's only going to be uh, you know once a month that, that that list is going to be updated. The hope is that people are starting to be transitioning to the 5.0 list. By the end of June uh, 2024, that list will be deprecated and no longer updated. Uh, you can find out more about that. That was announced, I guess, earlier this year in, in this blog post. Um, you can find out the details there. It's just what I essentially said to you here about what our plans are for deprecation of that of maintenance of the 4.0 format of the CV list. And finally, uh, a quick uh, service announcement. We will be doing some more technical uh, training or have a technical workshop in the first quarter of next year to talk, just talk about CVE services, just to, to identify the interfaces, how to use the, the clients, how to specifically do bulk download, the mechanics of doing that. Uh, we have that documentation training available today, but we're going to have a workshop focused exclusively on, on, on that. Okay, so look, be looking for that uh, in, in uh, an invite for that in the, in, in the near future. With that, uh, I apologize for the technical difficulties and for my, uh, it, my, the issues I had with trying to get this up, uh, up on the screen for you. I hope you've been able to see it okay. Uh, we will send, a, send them out. Uh, if you have questions, um, we can uh, we can have those here. I don't know where we are, Dave, on time. We're probably right at time. Um, but also, you can get involved. Get involved with the AWG. Like I said, we meet every week. It's open to anybody who wants to know. You don't have to be a CNA to be involved in the AWG. Anybody can be involved in that. I will send you um, send you get send me a note, and I'll send you an invite. We use Groups.io. You become part of the mailing list, and you get all the emails. Uh, about what's going on and our topics and the things we're deciding and the decisions we make. So, and you can easily be a part of that and have your voice heard. So it is a community. It is, and I like to say this, it is, um, you know, by the community for the community. And that is you guys. So we hope you want to get involved and we look forward to seeing some of you, hopefully in a, a, an AWG meeting uh, soon. Okay. Thank you very much. And that's, that's all for me.